maybe one of the hardest parts of this new journey. How do you help your child with homework if you're not able to read it? Hey guys, welcome to my channel. It's your girl Michelle from Honeysim JA. If you're joining me for the very first time, welcome, welcome. I'm happy to have you. If you're not here for the very first time, Wagwan Man, thank you for your continued love and support. So, as you guys can tell from the title of this video, today I'm going to be talking about what you can expect when your child is entering a Japanese public elementary school. So if you're interested in finding out what these things are, then definitely stay tuned because guess what? I got you. I got you, fam. <laughs> Lunch hour, Kyushaku, Jikan. So in most elementary schools across Japan, the schools actually provide lunch, which I, as I mentioned earlier, you will have to pay for. So the students are responsible for serving their classmates lunch, of course with the guidance of the classroom teacher. The students all sit together and enjoy their lunch and this actually helps in building relationships and learning how to respond and socialize with other children. If your child has any health issues or any allergies, please speak with your school. You should be able to apply for a special lunch that does not include whatever it is that your child may have an allergy to or they may not be able to consume. And in that case, a specially prepared lunch will be provided. Now, if your child's elementary school does not provide lunch, it means that you will be responsible for preparing your child's bento. You will be responsible for preparing your child's lunch. I also have two videos talking about how to prepare a bento. So if you guys have not seen it yet, then definitely go ahead and check them out after watching this video. Expect also that each month you will be sent a printout of the lunch menu and these menus are usually prepared well in advance so you can have an idea of what it is that your child is eating at school. And a small carton of milk is usually served with their lunch. Occasionally there are days when lunch will not be provided and your school will notify you about this, so you will be expected to prepare a bento and send with your child. So for example, they have an excursion or they're going on a school trip, they may be required to prepare their own lunch at home and take with them to school. Cleaning hour, shoji jikan. In Japanese schools, students share the responsibilities of cleaning the classrooms as well as the school grounds. So for most schools, they do not have a janitor. It is the students along with the teachers facilitating them that clean their classroom as well as the school grounds. Club activities. Bukatsudo. So if you wish to have your child joining an athletic club, you can go ahead and do so. And these activities are usually done after school as well as on the weekend. In my opinion, the hours, however, are usually long, most times three evenings per week and up to three hours on the weekend. During the evening, the students may go from 6 to 8 p.m. Speaking from experience, I want to say that as the parent, you should think long and hard about having your child joining an after-school club. It is very good for them in terms of building relationships as well as the physical aspect of it and also the mental aspect of it. It is very, very good. But alongside that, I want you guys to also think about the cons. So with everything, there are pros and there are cons. For me, I found that there are more cons than pros because of the long hours that they have to practice and simply because as I said before I'm a single parent here in Japan so I don't really have a lot of time 
and I've also thought about how it would affect my child in the sense that after school in the evening so school finishes about 3 p.m. and then practice starts about 6 p.m. and may go up to 8 p.m. in the evening which for me as a non-Japanese person who has been cultured differently my son is usually in bed by about 8, 8.30 so I think it would be very hard for both of us after school care so if you're like me and your job goes until later on in the evening it means that you will not be available to take care of your child when school finishes maybe 2 30 or 3 p.m you have the option of using the after school care now some elementary schools they have their own after school care program that you can utilize as well as you may have to find an after-school care program that is not located where your child's school is located so some after-school care program usually run up to maybe 6 p.m. 7 p.m. it depends on the center and you can expect to pay a monthly fee of about 4,000 to up to 7,000 yen along with insurance fee which is maybe no more than maybe a thousand yen it all depends and remember guys that whatever I share with you I'm sharing based on my experience my research as well as the experience of others with whom I have spoken so with the after-school care here the students they are well taken care of they can get help with their homework as well as they will be provided with snacks and please be aware that you will also be charged for the snacks that they will be given Again, if your child has allergies or any health issue as it relates to food, please bear in mind that you can provide your own. And in the event that your child takes his or her own snacks, you will not be charged for snacks. Homework. Wow. Now, I think for many parents like myself who are not fluent in Japanese, both as it relates to the oral and the written aspect of Japanese, this is going to be maybe one of the hardest parts of this new journey how do you help your child with homework if you're not able to read it <laughs> anyhow what i've done is i've spoken with the teachers at the after school care program they know my situation in the sense that i'm not fluent in japanese and i am a single parent with that he's able to get as much help as he possibly can get when he is at the after school care here the students are also allotted time when they are expected to do their homework it's not a must but most japanese students who have to go to an after school care they usually do their homework or the majority of the homework at the after school care program so i'd suggest that you speak with the teachers there and let them know what your situation is trust me there are some really kind and helpful people out here and the next suggestion google translate google translate is your best friend yes you will you guys will eat sleep drink well he should be a best friend already if you live in japan and you don't speak japanese but anyways he's going to become your bestest 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 of friend yes so use your google translate it may not always be clear but you can also go online and look up things by the way talking about online there's a group on facebook called parents of kids in elementary hold on let me make sure I get that right. Joining, if you haven't already joined it, it's called Parents with Kids in Japanese Schools. You can get help there because there are parents like myself and like you who are willing to help and assist you in any way possible. Official first day of school. So if your home country is anything like my home country, then on the first day of school, your child usually takes all their school supplies To school I thought it was the same here in Japan however it's not so on the first day of school your child will not be expected to take all those things that you prepared for school what will happen is that you will be given a printout of the timetable for maybe the first two weeks of school and according to that timetable you will send the materials based on the timetable so if your child is having arts and crafts then on that day you'll be expected to send those things after the first two to three weeks of school your child will then be expected to write the timetable from the board into their notebooks 
in Hiragana. Getting home from school. So with schools starting in another two weeks, I imagine that you would have already started familiarizing your child with the route they're supposed to take when they go to school and the route they're supposed to take when they're coming home from school, if it is that you will not be picking them up. Now, usually after school, students also go home in groups, especially for the first few weeks of school. However, expect that this may change because the groups are made up of different grades and some grades they finish earlier than other grades. There are also instances where your child may have to go home by themselves. I, however, suggest that you try and get your child to walk with a neighbor when they go home. Try as much as possible not to let them walk home by themselves. Now, something that's very important for you as the parent and for your children to know about is what they call Kodomo Hyakujuban. Kodomo Hyakujuban. <laughs> Now, that represents houses. We would probably call them safe houses. So in the event your child is on his or her way home and there is somebody, you know, going after them or something happened and they're scared, there are houses that have this particular picture where they can go to get help. While you're walking the route with your child, make sure that you are pointing out these signs because it may not be that obvious to your child. Bedtime. I find this interesting and that's why I'm including it in this video. When my son first started elementary school here in Japan, I was talking with one of the teachers and the topic of bedtime came up. And I was surprised to learn that children, even as young as first graders, they are going to bed very late. 10 p.m., 11 p.m., 12 p.m. When I shared with the teacher that my son is usually in bed by 8 or 8.30, she was literally shocked out of her mind. <laughs> she was like, what? So yeah, you will definitely hear about that a lot. Children here in Japan, they go to bed very late. I'm not sure what they're up doing, but yeah. Based on how I've been cultured, children have a set bedtime and it's usually earlier than the times that I've learned of here in Japan. Parent-teacher association. Now the PTA at your school is there to support the education at your school. The PTA puts together different activities and this offers the opportunity for parents to get to know their child's teacher as well as the parents of your child's classmates. The PTA organizes parent-teacher meetings, helps during community events, makes school newsletters, and also makes sure that children make it to home and school safely. Usually, stay-at-home moms are the persons who join the committee, and this is pro bono work, of course. I want to say don't feel pressured, especially if you are a single parent like myself, especially if you work, especially if you're not very fluent in Japanese, don't feel pressured to accept a position on the PTA committee. The Japanese parents will understand, the Japanese teachers will understand. However, I do recommend trying to participate as much as you possibly can by attending the meetings, even if you're just there sitting and not understanding a word that is being said. Not like I know anything about that. <laughs> But try as much as you can to participate because you will need the support. You will need the help. All right. So try not to isolate yourself. Go out there, put yourself out there, put your child out there and help yourself to help yourself and help yourself, help yourself. Yeah, that makes sense. Help yourself, help yourself. Yeah. <laughs> video guys, thank you guys so much for staying until the end of the video. If you found this video to be informative and helpful, make sure that you share it with a friend who may need this information. If you have any questions or any queries, then definitely leave me a comment down below and I'll do my best in answering your questions. Until my next video, bye!